This past week, Game Informer sat down with creative director Mac Walters to talk about writing in the Mass Effect series, and game development in general on the upcoming Mass Effect Andromeda. These are some clips of my analysis of it. For me, when we shipped Mass Effect 3, probably more precisely when we shipped Citadel, you know, it felt like we put a bow on that and, and we tied up the trilogy. We always meant that trilogy to have a start and an ending to it. I think it's fair to say we didn't, the ending didn't go the way we wanted, but you know, ultimately it was an ending. And it does feel like that is a sort of complete package. If by a complete package you mean having a ridiculous tongue-in-cheek side mission that tries to obfuscate the colossal galaxy-breaking black hole ending of a series, turning your greatest fans against you, then yeah, that would be the complete package. This in turn forced you to do a soft reboot because of said black hole you painted the entire series into. You know, that's one of the things that's interesting about working on this team is that for the first time ever, we actually have... Uh, a large proportion of fans from the trilogy working on the next game. A lot of people came here, they've played the trilogy and that's why they're here, they're excited to do that. Their sort of view of what Mass Effect was is, is very pure. They didn't see the sausage getting made like I've seen the sausage getting made. So they, they just had this sort of very purest vision of what Mass Effect is, the sort of the spirit of Mass Effect. And I think the only people who would want to work at Bioware at this point are either A, people like me who saw the narrative catastrophe at your flagship series, who have some skills in game development and design, and decided to rush to the burning building to prevent even more catastrophe, or B, a bunch of racist ideologues of questionable skill, or C, biodrones who are so enthusiastic they'll do anything to be helpful because everything you do is gold. We're, we're at Bioware, we're very focused on story, story first, right? To me, what I started to realize over the course of, of that trilogy was, yes, the story is important, certainly the plot is important, the setting is important, but it, it's the characters that people love. It's the characters that people remember. Right, you focused on a story, except for, you know, the most important part, the ending, the point of the plot, the goal of the protagonist, the point of the entire narrative. There is a reason why one is nicknamed Mac the Hack Walters. There is a reason why Casey Hudson is gone, and why you fill in his shoes. I don't know what that reason is exactly, but I'd be curious to find out. Oh, is this plot, you know, as exciting as the last plot, or is this story going to be as epic as the last story? It's like, well, let's let's actually start with characters and do that. And I think that a lot of our early development was around the characters, and that really helped out. There's nothing wrong with focusing on characters. If by characters you mean the protagonist and the antagonist, and that's all. You don't start filling in a universe with characters because that might be a fun exercise. Once you've got the two main characters, you then focus on plot, and then you're done. Everything else is an extension of the two main characters and their plot. Secondary characters are secondary. What are the lessons? What are the takeaways then? Like, how do you take that broad thought and boil it down to these are the keys to making good characters? The keys to making good characters, this is going to sound really trite, but what I always tell people with, with when, they're, when they're developing new characters is to write what you know. That's not trite. That's writing 101. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not exactly the ingenious, profound answer I was looking for from a writer who's now a creative director in a company that focuses primarily on writing, but it's not wrong. It's just not impressing me, and I doubt it's a motivation for the actual writers on the project. Characters more now than ever, like when you look at how they, you know, come across in Frostbite, they look amazing, right? How a character looks is largely irrelevant to their characterization, unless you're going to get into specific acting or stage directions. Compare that to his next response. Right, so... I think one of the other things that we've learned over time is go back to, you know, Baldur's Gate days, Neverwinter Nights days. You had these little tiny pixels on the screen. Maybe you got a, a little, you know, 2D image of them, a little bit of VO. That was it. Everything else was the dialogue. That's what that's what sold it for you and your imagination, right? Almost like a book. Nowadays, we've got a Asari that we've seen so far, and we now know her name is, is PB, uh, but she was just a smiling Asari. But she already had, you know, a persona um, with our fans just based off of a, her, her animations and the way she looked, right? And, and that was brought to life with, you know, some of the things we can do with our characters now, which we just haven't been able to do, really sell before, and it's amazing. Well, technology can definitely give us a better visual cue to start deducing or appreciating a character's personality and perhaps their dreams based on how they look. That's not characterization. These are just a visual form of exposition. This does not make them deep or human or good or evil. It's just how they look. Fans attributing things based on marketing also has nothing to do with how good your characters might be, and God help you if you go back and change them because of their opinions. It just means you've got some talented visual animators. And no offense, but the smiling Asari short shot of PB looks and acts a lot different from her demo vaulting crotch shot where she uses a teleporting gun. I'm talking about the differences between 
a little girl and an adult woman different. So excuse me if your marketing as usual sucks or lies to us. Uh, and I would start writing to that voice and eventually you realize, oh yeah, it kind of sounds like this character and that character together and it, and it kind of congeals. So the process I find for writing characters is one that evolves over time. Certainly for the larger characters, you'll start down a path and then you'll kind of just find that zone and then you come back to it and just make sure it all fits. I completely agree. I think another, another thing that came out that while the people love the choices that matter and they love some of the darker things that happened in the series, if we were going to explore uh, in this new galaxy and we wanted the player to feel like they were going to explore, I think people were saying, don't make me feel like if I go off and do this little side quest, I'm, I'm letting the universe burn. Okay, so you want choices to matter, but you pretty much guaranteed that not happening when you screwed up the Mass Effect 3 ending. So I have very little faith in that. Having choices matter is an interactive form of continuity between the games. This was also screwed up. And this is, I think, their greatest quality in a franchise, and that's just now gone. You know, where's Garrus? Where's my choices? Where's the stuff that personally matters to me? This is why, as we observe the trailers and current media from Andromeda, we get this, this general sense of, of generality. It's, it's a space opera. There's, there's really nothing new here. You, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to import your save. The aliens are generic. The th enemies are generic. The theme is... It's generic. Even discovering that an alien vault in another galaxy can create artificial gravity, I mean, that's that's the Mass Effect. That's that's known. That's generic. We didn't see that one coming, did we? Whoa. How is this a Mass Effect game when we're in a brand new galaxy? I, we still don't know. It's a bit more adventurous. I want to just go and explore. I want to see what's over that hill. I want to see if I can take on that large enemy over there. It's just a bit more of that... Uh, youthful sort of energy this isn't you know a seasoned team that's going out yeah we know we've, we've been there we've done it it's more of a i don't know what that's going to be like well let's go find out this i agree with uh this was in the spirit of the sense of adventure in mass effect one you just take your space dune buggy and you explore so hey it's that's a good idea it seems like that's going to be an element that has returned instead of generic cover-based shooter space marine game x and it's just like well this this has to live up to what mass effect is and honestly the, the best thing I can offer them is, is I just say, look, I'm not going to let this not feel like Mass Effect. You know, I was there and there's other people on this team who are there and we can look to those people and say, can you help guide us and make sure we don't go off the rails? But in the meantime, just let your imaginations run wild. And it's difficult. You know, Mass Effect is highly critically acclaimed. It's our fans, you know, obviously care deeply about it. We don't want to um, screw it up. But the other thing is we've never succeeded by, by worrying about that in a negative way. We've always succeeded at that by saying, look, let's just do you know, the best that we can with what we've got and tell the most amazing stories, give them the best player experiences that we can. And I think that's something that's always stayed true at Bioware and on this team. So I'm pretty confident that the, you know, the, the team is going to, they'll get there. They're just stressed about it, but sure, we'll get there. What do you mean we'll get there? This, isn't this game launching in like three months? Can Mac Walters just tell us what Mass Effect is anymore? It's definitely not the setting, since we're not in the Milky Way anymore. It's definitely not the characters. They're all dead. So where and what is the continuity? What's the same? Is, is it a space opera amidst an epic story about saving the galaxy? There's, there's no more renegade and paragon points. So what is it exactly? This is just me being curious here, but I still have that soul-destroying ending problem to remind myself how bad this fellow and the last product screwed up beyond reason. Mass Effect, so far, has been a gigantic lie that started beautifully and ended in narrative destruction. Until this guy and his next project can prove otherwise, that's what it's going to be. Is there a message you want to convey to fans? If something you feel like they're worried about that you want to drive home? Yeah, well, I don't know if there's something specific that fans are worried about, but... I just have three continuous questions. Did you write the ending first before you wrote the story? And if this is your next series of stories, did you write the ending to all of those? Because if you didn't, can you guess what's going to happen again? Well, I know what the answer to that is. I'm sure you guys have different opinions. So please tell me what you think is going to happen again in Mass Effect Andromeda.